So, what is the way forward for Nigeria? Before we get some other opinions on the state of affairs in the country as we have it present, because tonight we have some very influential persons in the country who are going to be cheering their views on the state of affairs. Let's first get to hear the president's views on this very worrying situation that we have found ourselves as a people. I'm being joined tonight, first and foremost, by the president's spokesperson, Mr. Femi Adishino. He joins us from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, Mr. Adishino, for your time tonight. We hear some of the efforts of this government in arresting what has become a disastrous trend of progression of unemployment and inflation. How does the presidency explain this, especially when critics say this government lacks capacity to handle the economy? Thank you. Good evening. Um, I, I think in any nation at any given time, it is not enough to just focus on the negatives. In any country in the world, if you want to focus on the negatives, there will be more than enough for you to see and to talk about. But then there are always silver linings in the sky from time to time. It's typical of Nigeria that when those silver linings come, we don't talk about them. You talked about inflation at 17 point something percent. When that inflation dropped to about 11 percent a couple of years back, we didn't hear a sound. We didn't hear a sound about it. When we went into recession the first time and we came out, we went the second time, COVID induced, and we came out, not much about it. When you hear that our budget performance was about 97%, not much about it. All that we hear most times from critics, from the section of the media, are just the negatives. The truth is that in any country in the world, if you want to focus on the negatives, you will have more than enough to chew. So let's realize that in Nigeria, there are positives. In economy, in security, in all spheres of life, there are positives. It depends on the one we want to focus on. If we want to focus on the negative, we will have enough to focus on. But if we also want to see the silver lining and encourage ourselves and encourage our countrymen, there are also things to focus on. The choice is ours. So tonight, let's focus on the two things that you have talked about. You talked about the issue of inflation. Let me remind you, Mr. Adishino, uh, of where the country was when the government of President Buhari took over. At, in 2016, the inflation rate was 15.68%. In 2017, it rose to 16.52%. It dropped in 2018 to 12.09%. 2019, 11.4%. So if it is at 17% now, are you saying Nigerians shouldn't be worried about how this will affect the food on their table and their livelihood? You just misquoted me there now. I didn't say Nigerians shouldn't be worried. What I said was that when we came to that 11.4%, there were no plaudits. You didn't make it a focus. But when we are in 17 point something, that is when it's now a focus. I'm saying that life is like being out on the sea. You take the rough and the smooth. Don't talk about only the rough. Talk about both. So you also talked about um, the situation of the economy and how we went into a recession. The government of President Buhari, because we're talking about what you met and how you are handling it and how Nigerians have fared under the President Buhari administration and that of the APC, because we're now dwelling on the promises made and what has been delivered tonight. So Mr. Adishino, for example, in 2015, Nigeria was not in recession. Nigeria went into recession less than two years of this government. And you are making a reference to the fact that we're not dwelling on it. Nigerians have been promised that their lives will be better. And that is what has gotten our attention. Tonight, let us look at one major factor. Can Nigerians, Mr. Adishina, believe the Buhari government, for example, part of the campaign promises is that it would create 3 million jobs yearly. Later, we were told 100 million jobs in a decade. But the latest figures show that things have gone in the opposite direction. More and more Nigerians are unemployed. 
it takes us back to what I've just said. Yesterday or the day before, I had a projection from the ITF saying that by 2030, ITF alone will take 7 million people out of uh, poverty. And you have agencies of government like that all over that have given their targets of what they will do within a certain period. Why does that not become a talking point? It never is a talking point in our country. Rather, it is a cumulation of problems over decades that we continue to focus on. Let us keep our eyes on the sparrow in this country and look at the positive things for a change. It will help us. It will help our psyche. And it will also accelerate whatever the government is doing. It's not one government that will do it. If the Buhari government says it will take 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years, that government would not be available for the next 10 years. It has just about two years and two months to go. It shows you then that it's a progression in Nigeria. And it, the onus is on us. Media, civil society, critics, opposition party to focus on things that can be done to achieve that goal, not what is not being done. I agree with you, Mr. Adeshina, that sometimes in our lives you need to reflect on the good and sometimes on the ugly. So tonight, we remember some of the good things, and perhaps we have had this conversation about some of the good things. But when these figures that are troubling have come up, will we ask those who are in the leadership of this country and those who are worried about this, some, uh, some of these figures are the average Nigerians on the street, Mr. Deshina, Tonight, unfortunately, we'll perhaps dwell on some of those things you may not like to talk about, but those are the promises and the burden on this government. Take a look at those figures on your screen, Mr. Additional. Unemployment rate is at 33%, which makes us stand out negatively as a country in the world. Unemployment count shows 23.2 million Nigerians are looking for jobs. They are capable of working, but they cannot get jobs. Poverty rate is 4.1%, showing that over 80 million Nigerians are poor. These are some of the statistics that are not there necessarily before this government came into power. And the question tonight, Mr. Additional, we want to know what the president is thinking or what he is doing urgently when some of these figures came up in changing the trend. The trend is troubling, and that's why we have you to talk to us about it tonight. Is the president worried as well about what worries us? No, you didn't quite get it. You didn't quite get it because... If you recall, in 2015, build up to the 2015 election when APC was campaigning, the figure that was used by the then candidate Buhari was that minimum of 30 million Nigerians were out of jobs, were unemployed, particularly youths, and that his government was going to do something about it. That was in 2014, 2015. So don't make it appear as if it's something that a, a journey that just came out of the bottle. No, it had always been there. It has always been there. As at 2014, 2015, the figure used for campaign was 30 million unemployed Nigerians. It's on record. You can check so, it. So let's dwell on what you promised. You promised 3 million jobs yearly. Since 2015, or let's even take from 2019, how many jobs have this government added, Mr. Adeshino? I wouldn't have that at my fingertips, but there is a Ministry of Labor and Employment. If you would just take the effort and ask the Ministry of Labor and Employment to supply jobs that have been generated over a certain period, particularly since two years when President promised that 100 million will be taken out of poverty in 10 years. You can now ask. By June 12 this year, it will be exactly two years that that promise was made. It's the duty of the media to find out what has been achieved in two years. And from the achievement in two years, you can then project that in 10 years, uh, this will either be achievable or not. We can't just sit here and conjure figures. 
We have to work on facts and figures available to the right ministries and agencies. And one of those ministries is labor and employment. As a media house, channels can find out. Mr. Adeshino, we have found out and we put some figures to together tonight. And those are the figures we're pushing to you tonight. But if you do not agree with those figures, these are some of the figures of the government itself. Agencies of government have put out these figures. But this is another figure, Mr. Adeshino, that I would like to put to you tonight. At the presidential rally, President the can, uh, candidate Buhari at the time promised that he would ensure that the Naira was equal to the dollar in value if it was voted into office. Mm -hmm. At the time, he said the official value of Naira is almost uh, uh, that it, it was going to um, uh, reduce the value of the Naira to the dollar. But now we've had almost a double of, of that from 2015 to now. The question is, what is the president doing in keeping to that promise also? That is another fact, isn't it, Mr. Additional? But what you just said, Shem, does not exist. It is fake. It is false. It is apocryphal. It doesn't exist. And the Minister of Information, Elijah Lai Muhammad, has debunked that before. It doesn't exist. It was never said. If it's said, there should be clips. There should be publications. It was never said. It was a conjuration by some people. And will it then become an albatross round the government's neck? That was never said. It was never promised. I challenge you to make the clip available where that promise was made. All right. The president was reported to have said that at a Dan Ayam Stadium where in Imo State. If you don't agree with that figure, let's move forward, Mr. Additional. And I'd like to ask you tonight, um, the former pres uh, Vice President Atiku Abubakar's statement depicted a tone of a government under President Buhari that does not listen to the counsel of others, and he says that patriots like him have advised the government in this regard, especially relating to the latest figures on unemployment, and he feels that part of the problem we are having is that maybe the government is not listening. Why have we found ourselves where we are today, Mr. Additional? Thank you. Um, the former vice president was in power for eight years. Now he is in opposition to government. You can't take whatever he says as the gospel. It, it can be. The question is when former Vice President Atiku Abubakar was in government with President Olusha Mubasanjo, where did they take the country to? Where did they leave the country? There are clips I've seen myself on social media where he was saying some things they promised to do, particularly on power. Some people collected so, so, so trillion and they didn't deliver that they collected the money and they didn't deliver. And the interviewer asked him, did they go after them? He said, unfortunately, we didn't go after them. <coughs> so, um, Vice President, former Vice President Atikwa Abubakar was part of the rot this country became. So, he can't exculpate himself. He can't begin to sit in judgment over anybody. He played his part for eight years and they left the country where they left it. He can't claim, uh, uh, he can't, like Pontius Pilate, be begin to wash his hands clean of what Nigeria has become. So invariably, the presidency will not listen to a vice president article in this regard. That's not what I said. The president will always listen to what is well-founded. Anything that is well-founded, anything that is not born out of negative politicking, the presidency will always listen. Isolate the good things, isolate the ones that are well-founded, and utilize them. But anything that is based on pull him down, anything that is based on negative politicking, will just be the opinion of the person that has said it. He will have a right to it, but nobody is compelled to then listen to him. So, um, does the latest figures on the MBS uh, give the president some kind of concern and perhaps headache because it's worrying? Um, some things that could easily spark or push him to urgent action. 
The current situation and trends on, of unemployment has been compared to the Great Depression of the 1930s by former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Obadiah Melafia. Uh, and he said, considering the figures and economic indices, is uh, reported to have said that situation led to a lot of troubles where people even committed suicide. Is it worrying for the president? And what is the president saying about these latest figures from the MBS where it's been compared to the Great, uh, Great Depression where people committed suicide? Well, you have a knack for bringing up people that carry bile in their hearts against their own country. The person you have just quoted, we know his position. We know untruths he has said about the situation in the country. And when they will call him to come and explain, he will start shouting persecution. You have a knack for bringing up those people. There are also other people who can isolate these issues dispassionately, without bile, without hatred, unlike that man you have mentioned. Then, talking of depression and all that, did you also see the statistics that Britain, has had his worst economic performance in 200 years? Did you see the report that Britain has borrowed more than ever in the country's history because of challenges, because of pandemic, which is global? Did you see the report of that quarter that Nigeria came out of recession? Did you see the report of other countries? Do you see where they are? Let us cut some slack, give Nigeria some, some credit. Cut Nigeria some slack on these things. We are making progress. It may be slow, slower than we want, but things are looking up. It's not all gloomy, as you said. Then coming to the MBS report. Yes, MBS is an agency of government. Is it not to the credit of this administration that it never tampers with the MBS statistics? It never tries to muzzle MBS. MBS. Whatever MBS has found, it releases. And government takes it in good faith and uses it to work. But let me tell you, it is a global phenomenon and not peculiar to Nigeria. Mr. Femi Adesina, spokesperson to the President Mohamed Buhari, thank you so much. We love our country. I'm a lover of this country, and I will not stop loving Nigeria. But as a journalist, we will keep asking the questions. And thank you so much for your time tonight on the program. Thank you.